Hi and welcome. It's Lonnie at Grace Blossoms for you. And yesterday I made this tag that I really liked and I can't really duplicate it on video because it uses a machine, but I can give you the gist of what I did. Um, I want, I want to make some more, but, um, maybe I could do them a little differently. So I had this image. Well, first I started with a file folder tag shape and then I sewed this image onto it. And I also sewed some lace onto it. So that was the one side. Then I saw my new friend Peg over at Craft Room Stories and she had watched this other video, I can't remember who it was by, and she was making these um, little bits of lace clusters. So basically you just pile on a bunch of different laces and she put a charm on there and then she put it into a bulb pin. And I thought that would make a nice um, topper here for the tag. And then I just tied a bow with some ribbon around it just to build it up and give it a little bit more height. So I thought that was really cute. And then on the back, because um, I already had the seam stitch, I just took another image and kind of centered it in there. And then I added a couple of butterflies. And so I really liked how this came together. And while I may not be able to duplicate it, maybe we could do something similar. So I have this other tag here that I sewed around. And I was thinking, because I already have some grunge on the back, so I was kind of going to leave that. But I thought we could maybe decorate this side. And maybe we could make one of those lace clusters as well. So I'm just going to put the hole right there. And I made my own reinforcements this time because why not? I just punched a couple of circles out and then I punched a hole inside those circles. They seem to be really strong because I used the craft color cardstock. So I thought they would actually be stronger than the ones you buy from the store. And this way I don't have to ink them because they're already brown. So there's that. Okay. So then we need an image. And it doesn't have to be that shape necessarily. It can be any image you like. I do have some that are kind of framed. That one looks nice, but it's a little too big. That one's narrower, but it's a little tall. Okay, I'm going to use that. Yes, I like to put images on backgrounds and then use them that way. I think I will ink this one a little though. I actually wasn't going to, but the reason I wasn't going to is because the way I have these images on the white cardstock here reminds me of the photos we used to get back when back in the day when you would take your negatives to the um, 
photo place. I don't know whether they call them. And then you would wait for them to develop your pictures and they would come out with a white border. So I'm going to glue this. So how are you doing today? Are you crafting? Are you taking it easy? Are you settling into September? Can you even believe it's September? So, there's that. And I'm going to ink the tag as well. Alright, so then I guess we're going to need some lace. I'm going to just move that stand in front of me so I can see kind of what I had done there. So, for instance, I had this really long lace and I just cut that. So I had just cut that into a strip here, kind of for the background. I'm just going to duplicate that one because I have all the same lace still here. And then I had this blue one, which I was thinking of cutting in half, but what I ended up doing was just making it a little shorter. Like so. And then I have this brown lace, which I did get this one from the thrift store and it's pretty wide so I have been cutting it into narrower strips. So basically for this one I just kind of trimmed out the middle just to give me some different um, colors and shapes. Could use a skinny one too. I've done that before. So let's see. And two, you can play around with them, see what you like. I think I like the brown on top. Maybe we'll go for a shorter one here. Like that. I'll save those for another time. Like that. And then I had one more here. I'll improvise. So what I did with the last piece, I just and uh, put, folded that in half to make it look like a bit of a ribbon there, like so. And then I need a term because that's what attracted me to this project in the first place. Well, 
this one's really tiny. Maybe I need a jump ring for that one. Just to give it a little bit of... A little bit of help to stand out here. This one's always a little tricky. Already dropped one. Okay, so just gotta find that opening. There it is. I don't know if it's even gonna fit into this little hole with the butterfly here. does not. I think the hole in the butterfly is too small. Yep, it's not gonna work. Let's see. I've actually been using the, some of the charms to um, Oh, you know why? Because most of the other holes in the charms are built up on the outside. Okay, something to keep in mind. So this one is a flower and the hole is a little larger, quite a bit larger actually. But I was thinking I could still add this. And then I'll get a bulb pin. I only have the one color of bulb pin, so that kind of limits me for that. But oh well, it is what it is. Okay, so I put the charm on first, like Peg showed us. And then the tricky part is going to be to make sure to get all these little bits lined up in the exact spot so that they can be picked up. Now I do this on the edge and I only go through once. That helps the charm to lay nicer. And I have to do that again because I don't think it likes that jump ring. Because the jump ring is causing it to um, turn on its side. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. And that can swing around there. I'm just kind of gently tugging on it to see if it's attached. All right, so then we can go ahead and put this in there. Like so. Okay. I don't think I have too many on there, but I'm not a hundred percent sure either. Okay, so there they're all there. Then what I'm realizing, this picture is different. See on this one, I've got lots of the flower. So the lace covering up some of it, it's not a big deal. On this one though, the, um, the lace is covering up all of the bulbs or the flowers itself. 
So I think what I'm going to do is save that for something else and see if one of the other ones I've made here are going to be a bit better. Somehow I doubt it because I think I made them all a little on the large side. Okay. I've got a few that I made and yeah, some of them are quite large. How about that one? Still too big. Okay, what I could then do, this one's really long. All right, here's my plan. Because what I also did was make some little bits of fabric and then add some lace on top and secure it with a button. So what I was thinking, I could maybe use one of those. Again, if I have a small enough one. And this is the smallest one I have. So let me try this. With another bulb pin. Put it on its side. Just to make it a little. So this one then doesn't have a charm, but I suppose it could. I mean, it could have a button and a charm, right? Here's a bit of a different shape. It's a moon. Okay, I don't know. Might be overkill to have the charm and the button. But not really, because it swings back and forth. So you can still see both. And now you can see the flowers. So you just have to play with it till you get what it is you want to do. And then for the back, I probably will want to put another butterfly. I do like butterflies. That one's kind of cool because it... I think I like this one. Yeah, I'll go with that one. All right, let me... Tidy up some things here. Yeah, so now I have to think of some other way to use these. I don't think that'll be a problem though because they're so pretty. So then there's... In fact, this one would go well with maybe like a word. That will work. Think good thoughts. And I'm going to put it on black, I think. Okay. I seem to have a lot of black laying around. same message. Just a little shorter. I guess I could have put or uh, made two tags out of it and then just separated it. 
if I could put the think and then the good thoughts down there. Ah, why not? I don't usually do that, but I can do it today. I like to have it a little narrower. It's a little tricky with small things, but we got it. So I think good thoughts. That kind of breaks up the tag a little too. There. So yeah, these are so fun and um you don't have to put those on tags. I just got the idea to do that. So at least I think it was my idea for this time. I don't know. I don't know. I could have seen somebody do it. Two, I really like the bow on there. And I'm thinking I might want, I have to think how long that one was. It's pretty long. Whoever came up with this contraption to hold all these ribbons together, I'm not a fan. All right, so put this through the pin and then I tied a knot with a long one. Let's see what I can do without. <laughs> I think it might be too small now. glue it in place if I wanted to. I think I'm just going to give that a little snip there and a little snip there. Yeah, it's just a matter of how you want it to sit and then if you want to attach it, you certainly can. I thought the whole point of putting the the bulb pin in was to um, kind of keep it flexible so that you could then even attach the tag to something else yet. So I might use that later. So something like that. All right, so then I have to decide now which am I gonna use in my journal, because I already, well, I already had the one in there. But now I'm not entirely sure which one I like better. I actually think this one would go better. All right, let's do that. Just got to find a spot. In fact, I think I had it right in the front. So. There we go. We got some hangy outy doodads there. And then they have to pull it out to see what it is they have there. 
So yeah, that's what I got today and uh, hope you enjoyed that. Go see Peg over at Craft Room Stories. She um, tells some whoppers. <laughs> Anyways, thanks again, Peg, for that idea. And um, we will see you guys next time. Bye for now.